Underwater battery, gravity battery, proton battery, redox flow battery, solid state battery, zinc air battery, salt battery. You may have noticed, yes, I do love batteries and they are so important. And the latest battery approach comes from Finland this time. The world's largest sand battery has now been put into operation. It supplies the district heating network of an entire village in Finland and could even be expanded to 10 times its current capacity. Today we will find out how sand can really be used to store energy and whether the battery would also work in other parts of the world. With that, I'm Dr. Jakob Botton and welcome to the German Science Guy and in Germany we say Los geht's. We all know the feeling you're lying on the beach in summer, relaxation, sunbathing and then at some point you want to go into the sea. But there's 50 meters of scorching hot sand, so hot that you can hardly walk on it. You can feel the heat stored in the sand directly on your feet and this lasts even after the sun went down. Finland has now used the principle to get entire cities through the winter with the world's largest sand battery. Let's take a closer look. The basic principle is quite simple. At its core, a sand battery consists of a large steel tank filled with sand. The tank has double walls and is insulated with several layers of standard insulating material. This ensures that the stored heat remains inside for a very long time, sometimes for many weeks. The tank can be charged and store energy in the form of heat through the sand. The storage unit is charged with surplus renewable electricity. A resistant heater heats air which is then blown through the sand via a pipe system. In detail, this works like a large toaster. Electricity flows through special heating wires of heating elements. These have a high resistance and this resistance generates heat due to the friction of the electron flow within the material. The electricity is converted directly into heat and transferred to a medium such as air. This hot air is then blown through the sand via a pipe system, heating the sand up to 600 degrees Celsius depending on the construction. And now comes a real highlight, which is what makes the system so interesting. The stored energy can be reused as needed. When heat is required, air is passed through the hot sand, the air absorbs the stored heat and transports it either as hot air, steam or hot water to where heat is needed. Depending on the size and configuration of the system, this allows you to quickly and flexibly call up exactly the amount of heat that is needed at any given time. In recent years, engineers and companies have also developed smaller sand heat storage systems for individual houses. However, the approach remains technically and efficiency-wise far behind what is now being implemented in Finland. This is because the principle was first really built commercially on a large scale there. We will now take a closer look at what this looks like in practice and how big the whole thing really is. So the world's largest sand battery was built by Finnish company Polar Night Energy in collaboration with local energy supplier Lovisan Lempö. Please correct me if this is mispronounced. So this mega project was commissioned in June 2025 in Pornain, south of Helsinki. And the dimensions are truly impressive. According to the company, the heat storage facility is around 30 meters high, 15 meters wide and contains around 2000 tons of crushed soapstone. This is a waste product from local fireplace production. So even if it's called the sand battery, it not only works with sand, but many sand-like alternatives can also be used. More on that later because the material is quite important here. Technically, the sand battery is designed so that the storage materials can theoretically be heated up to 600 degrees Celsius. However, how hot it actually gets always depends on what the local heating network needs at any given time. When discharging, the storage unit can reach an output temperature of 60 to 400 degrees Celsius. According to the company, these temperatures are sufficient for use in some industrial applications. Incidentally, this will also be the company's main focus in the future. The sand heat storage system achieves a total storage capacity of 100 megawatt hours, which is about 10 times as much as the first large prototype from 2022. According to the operator, the sand battery is designed for more than 8000 operating hours per year and can be charged between 20 and 200 times per year. This would theoretically enable it to supply between 2000 and 20,000 megawatt hours of heat. In reality, however, it's more likely to be 13 charging cycles, the company told us on request. Of course, this also depends on demand, surplus electricity and the price of electricity. 30 charging cycles would then correspond to an annual heat production of 3000 megawatt hours. This would cover the entire heat demand of the town of Ponain, which has a population of around 5000 people. In winter, a full charge lasts for about a week and in summer for almost a whole month. 
The maximum output, so how much heat can be extracted from the storage unit at one time is around one megawatt. A complete discharge would take about 100 hours and that with an estimated efficiency of around 80%. This means that around 80% of the electrical energy originally used is ultimately available again as usable heat. Although it can compete with other heat storage systems, its efficiency is slightly lower. The heat battery from Rondo Energy, for example, uses bricks as storage material and achieves an efficiency of up to 98%. According to the company, however, the efficiency of the sand battery improves to up to 90% the larger the system is. Another really promising aspect of the sand battery in Pornain is a digital control system and this is where the Finnish telecommunication company Elisa comes into play. After all, to ensure that the battery runs as efficiently as possible and really makes economic sense, it is not enough to simply charge it somehow. Today, the whole process is fully automated and smart. Elisa has developed special AI-based software that constantly monitors electricity prices, the grid status and weather data. This enables the system to automatically find the best times to charge the sand battery, ideally when there is a lot of wind and solar power in the grid and prices are at their lowest. Another highlight, the sand battery participates in the so-called reserve or control energy market. This means that it can flexibly draw electricity from the grid at short notice, so to charge the battery even faster when there is too much green electricity or reduce its power consumption when the grid is under load. The operator even receives money from the Finnish transmission grid operator for this flexibility as it helps to prevent over or under production. The bottom line is that Elisa software ensures that charging is as cheap as possible, operation is economically optimal and the power grid is stabilized at the same time. In practical terms, this means that the sand battery not only earns money by supplying heat, but is also paid extra for its flexibility and grid support. This has hardly ever been possible with conventional heating systems to date. Due to its design and implementation, the sand battery has many advantages over other storage methods. Sand or soapstone waste as a storage material is usually almost free. Unlike lithium-ion batteries, no rare or expensive raw materials, no toxic chemicals and no construction sand, which is becoming increasingly rare worldwide, are required. Instead, waste or inexpensive locally available rubble is used, which would actually be too poor for the construction industry. In principle, each region can use its own material and with that customize its sand battery. The sand or stone material does not have to meet any special construction standards. The main thing is that it is dense and heat resistant. This makes the sand battery robust against global raw material crisis. Another advantage is that the storage system lasts extremely long. According to the manufacturer Polar Night Energy, the system is designed for a service life of at least 30 years with hardly any loss of performance. And at the end of its useful life, the material can be recycled or reused. The system also has a modular design, meaning it can be built for small towns, entire neighborhoods or large industrial plants depending on requirements. Polar Night Energy already offers standard solutions, for example ranging from 2 megawatt systems with up to 2000 megawatt hour capacity for medium sized companies or heating networks to 10 megawatt system with up to 1000 megawatt hours of storage for really large applications. The project in Ponein is the largest practical example to date, but technically these storage systems can be scaled up much, much further. The system also makes a real difference in terms of climate protection. In the Ponein district heating network alone, the sand battery reduces CO2 emissions by around 160 tons per year. That's almost 70% less climate impact from heating. But of course, there are still some open issues and challenges and that brings us to the big hurdle which you already know from my videos. Before we get to that, ring the bell and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more videos about new innovations from all around the world. So the system specializes in heat, primarily process and room heat between 60 and 400 degrees Celsius. According to the company, this is sufficient for approximately 36% of industrial applications. However, sand heat storage is not suitable for the steel or cement industry, where temperatures of well over 1000 degrees are sometimes required. Furthermore, sand batteries are not an all-round solution for conventional electricity storage. This is because the system is not yet able to recover electricity from the stored heat. The company is working on a new prototype, however, the estimated efficiency would only be 30-35% to 35 in comparison, which is really, really low. 
in Finland and northern countries in general, this is no problem and makes perfect sense because there's a high demand of heating. I just think it's very niche because many countries don't really need that much energy in the form of heat. Furthermore, many countries do not have the infrastructure to implement this type of storage for district heating. For example, in Germany, there are currently only a few cities with comprehensive district heating. By the way of comparison, in the largest German cities, a maximum of 20% of homes are connected to district heating and under one of my last videos, I also read a comment from a viewer from Sweden who says that he wants to switch away from district heating because of the prices. Although the sand battery can also be used for industrial processes, it's currently realizing its greatest potential in places where a local or district heating system already exists. Without such infrastructure, even the best sand battery is of little use. And although it's pretty cool that no construction sand has to be used as a storage material, there are still requirements for the material. According to the company, it must be dense, as non-reactive as possible and above all permanently temperature resistant. Depending on the location and industry, additional transport costs may come up. I don't think the whole thing is as straightforward as the company makes it out to be. When we asked the company about that, the company said that no processing is necessary, but I find that a little hard to believe. You at least need to make it smaller, right, or process it in any way. And another point, the sand battery is still fairly new in real world operation. So you would first have to check several locations to see whether it is still so easy to implement. There's no reliable long-term data yet. For example, how stable the insulation technology and efficiency really is after 10, 20 or 30 years. Unforeseen repairs or aging effects could also reduce the advantage. The optimistic specifications of the manufacturers therefore still have to be proven in practical tests. But to be fair, I mean the system is quite simple so probably there are no big surprises there. Economically speaking, the entire concept has so far stood or fallen on intelligent control and clever participation in the electricity market. If energy prices remain low for a long time or if market regulations change, profit could drop significantly. And also the company did not provide any information on prices per kilowatt hour upon request. Finally, I would like to return to the issue of capacity. 3 gigawatt hours per year is of course relatively little. The XXL seawater heat pump built in Denmark I showed you in August generates a total of 280 gigawatt hours per year. This shows that the scale is still very small at this stage. And I know it's not a storage, but of course it could be used for heat generation for the storage and then you see the capacity is pretty small. In the end, I would say sand batteries may not be a magic solution for all locations, but I can certainly see them being useful for smaller or middle small towns with district heating, public buildings or industry in cooler regions where there is a significant surplus of green electricity. Combined with other storage systems and a better power grid, they could really contribute to the energy transition. Of course, for this to work here, district heating would have to be expanded and it wouldn't work without cheap green electricity. But even if it's not suitable everywhere, every new storage option makes us more independent from gas and oil. Now I'm curious to hear your opinion. What do you think? More sand batteries for the world instead of ever larger lithium batteries? Let me know in the comments and if you want to, here's the video about the XXL seawater heat pump that just built in Denmark. If you want to check it out, it's a very interesting technology. By the way, it's made in Germany but built in Denmark. So check it out and I say see you next time. Bis dahin, your Jacob.